हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय बिल्स कैटरी आई एम बॉबी वन के डे टुडेज वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट पर्जेंस सो माय लास्ट वीडियो वॉज अबाउट हाउ डू आइडेंटिफाई मेन खून कैट्स एंड अपॉन दैट वीडियो आई गॉट मेनी मोर मैसेजेस फ्रॉम पीपल आस्किंग मी अबाउट हाउ टू डू और हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई पर्जन कैट्स सो टूडेज वीडियो इज गोट बी अबाउट पर्जेंस before we start with the video please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video as well if you uh, like the content the ashil There are a lot of people out there that come up every day calling us up with that this is a doll face or this is a semi punch or this is an extreme punch this is monkey face and this is some blah blah kind of a face okay so for us persian or for any registry in the world if it is a persian it is a persian or it is not a persian at all okay so not every long hair cat is a persian okay a persian is a round round square cat round eyes round head square body short ear legs short ear short tail overall a, sh- a short appearance cobby looking uh, cat and always a snub nose so a persian will always have the nose profile will be snub it will not have a long nose profile okay so i am playing a picture over here that would make more justice to what i am saying so uh, this is uh, the picture where you can see that the eyes around the head is round and the body is a square okay in uh, in this slide you can see that uh, how the body the head of a persian should look symmetric it should not uh, be if you fold the face of a persian into a half it should be equal it cannot have the uh, nose that is to another side or you know it is crooked or it is not in the center or something of that kind so lot of people will have a question that where should the nose placement of a persian be so why do we judge a cat only by its nose when there's so much more to the breed in itself right so if i say a persian is 100 points and 30 points just for the head so head comprises of the skull structure if there is bumps or uh, something on the head and the uh, the placement of the eyes the roundness of the eye the eye color so many more things the uh, uh, the jaw alignment or you know if the cat has a wrong teeth or something of that kind so why just the nose there's so much more to the breed in itself right so uh, i'm playing a slide over here where you can see that how a persian's nose structure exactly should be so uh, these circles are the eyes and this triangle is the nose so if i am drawing a horizontal line from the center of the eyes then the persian's nose the beginning of the nose as in the top of the nose should touch that line okay at least uh, and for all those people out there who say we breed picky face persians and god knows what face persians we do breed ultra type persians right now so all those people out there um, who say we breed these so called picky face persians so picky face persians died out uh, in the 1990s because uh, it was um, genetically it wasn't correct for the skull because uh, uh, you know all those people out there who say persians have a lot of breathing problems and blah 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 if a persian is bred right it will never have breathing problems because if the nose is way above the eyes uh, and it's too tiny uh, the persian cannot breathe so 
the nose should be in such a manner where um, it is broad uh, the nostrils are big enough for the person to breathe and it should be right placed not uh, uh, in a proper symmetry it should be placed in the skull so breeding a person right it is important that the nose should be right placed but there is much more than the nose to the Persian and uh, to the breed Persian and exotic short hair. Now, or to all those people uh, who would say like, you know, uh, we have these uh, doll face and we have these semi-punch and blah, 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 uh, Persians, so-called Persians, uh, we should always ask them, hello. So, for all those people out there who say that we are breeding these uh, picky face per uh, uh, sorry, doll face Persians or semi punch Persians or blah blah punch Persians or they are so called Persians what they say uh, those cats are really not Persians because uh, your long uh, nose profile cats would basically uh, be called classic long hairs by the feline club of India which is the largest registry in India and if you are talking about other registries in the world, like the Cat Fancer Association would call it domestic long hair, while the World Cat Federation would call it traditional long hair, and so on. So there is no uh, such breed as doll face Persian and semi punch Persian, and either a Persian or not a Persian. So for all those people who are uh, who might be offering you all of these so-called face Persians. Uh, for those you what you can do is uh, you always have to ask them for a breed certificate so you ask them that they need to have a breed certificate for their cat and uh, I always recommend whenever you are going for a cat for a bred cat it should always be a pedigreed cat so you should always buy cats which are with papers uh, and uh, which are giving you pedigree for the cat so this paper should not the veterinarian should not write for you that so and so cat is from uh, Persian. It should be from a pedigree association. So if it, it's in India, either by the Feline Club of India, which is the largest registry in, in the country, or it can be from organizations which are worldwide like uh, Cat Fans Association or Tika or Fife and so on. So you always need to have a pedigree documentation. Who was the father? Who was the mother? Who was the grandparents? And so on. So if you are paying for that cat, you 100% need to get that documentation right. It is just not about pure bred cat. It should be about a pedigreed cat. It should always have a pedigree. So by if somebody tells me tomorrow that this cat is a, a pure bred cat, I won't say it's a. I won't accept it. I would first ask, show me on paper if this is a pure bred cat. And I would, I would agree to it. You need to ask the breeder whether the parents have had HCM, that is, or uh, they have had PKD, that is polycystic kidneys uh, disease. So, if these are there in the parents, it is genetic. It will come down to the kittens as well. Okay, so they are not supposed to be there. Now, uh, if a Persian has a wrong jaw, okay, so, uh, if you are having a cat, uh, somebody sold to you and it has a wrong jaw placement, then you need to t even take care about, uh, your breeder should tell you prior to that, that you know the jaw is wrong or there is some problem with this and this is a pet cat. It should not be used back to a breeding program because if such cats are used to breeding program, they are going to produce more defective kittens. Okay, so um, when you are looking for a Persian, uh, you should make sure that First, what you're looking for, are you looking for a cat as pet or you're looking for a cat as breeding or you're looking for a cat as show and you can accordingly decide that what kind of a kitten you want. For those people who are asking me about exotic short hairs, exotic short hairs are nothing but they are short hair Persians, okay. So uh, maintaining a Persian as a long coat is very difficult. So for those people who are a bit lazy and want to have Persians, they can have these exotic short hairs which are exact same body same anatomy same genetics uh, same kind of a gene pool as persians just short hair okay so um, for uh, i do did have some people who asked me a few questions on that that can a persian breed to an exotic short hair of course a persian can breed to an exotic short hair it is acceptable by every registry in the world because the gene pool is quite safe okay so because both the breeds have uh, the exotic short hair has a origin from the Persian, so 
of course uh, they are the same breed uh, so uh, you can breed a persian to exotic so when the kittens are born uh, the short hair kittens are called as exotic short hairs and the long hair kittens are called as exotic long hairs which are nothing but persians and are also registered as persians around any registry in the world so Let's look at the variety of colors that's available in the Persian breed. So um, Persians can have a massive amount of colors, a lot of colors. So I'm just going to talk about basic colors which are very uh, regularly seen. So you can have a white Persian. People are quite crazy about white Persians and I don't uh, suggest people to have white Persians, especially beginners because they're very difficult to maintain and keep white. So whites, then you have red Persians, you can have... Uh, uh, black Persian then you can have the dilutions of red and black that is uh, a blue dilute of uh, black you can have a dilution of the red that is green then you can also have chocolate cinnamon fawns and which are way another recessive of blacks and stuff um, then if I get into complex colors then you, uh, you can have party colors which are basically two colored cats which are torty shells so you can have uh, black and red which is a torty shell then you have a blue cream, which is a blue cream tortoise shell. Uh, then you can have tabbies into torties, which are patch tabbies, what they call them. Uh, on the other hand, you can have color points in Persians, which are basically uh, color is there only on the tips of the ears, somewhere on the face, the paws and the back paws, uh, the hind legs and your tail. So that would be and the body would be white and the eyes will always be blue. So that's color points would be uh, something. Then you have a uh, entire division of smokes and silvers. So there would be the coat would look black, uh, white from underneath, and it would be black on the top for uh, smokes. And you'll have silvers and shadeds also. So silver would uh, appear uh, will have maybe into patterns. It can be a uh, silver tabby with silver rings, or it can also be uh, a black silver tabby or a blue silver tabby and it can also be a shaded so you know the entire coat looks white but it has silver shading on the top of the hair so more like what people call chinchillas also i think that's all about uh, the persian as a breed uh, i would like to tell you people uh, i would always say that Try to get a cat from an ethical breeder who can always give you a kitten that is above 4 months, completely vaccinated. It should come with a breed certificate from some uh, authorized uh, registry like Feline Club of India in India or uh, you can get them from Cat Fans Association or you can have uh, from international registries like Tika, Fife or whichever registry but it should always have a pedigree and a breed certificate that is very important um, otherwise uh, if you want to just continue in the old fashion of doll face and all of that uh, i would recommend all those people who have watched this video today will never call doll face persian and all of those names it is either call them classic long hairs okay or you call them as persians persians will always be round round square with that snub nose while those long face ones would be your uh, classic long hairs. Now, if I'm talking about the semi punch cats, um, most of the breeders what they'll do is they'll mix domestic long hair as in classic long hair with your Persian, and when you breed it, the head structure is wrong formed where some kittens will have a lower nose profile. These kittens are called a semi punch and they sell them a semi punch. So it would be basically your crossbred Persian. Now, even if the Persian's nose profile is a bit lower, it does register into systems as Persian itself. But if it has a straight long face, it is not a Persian. It will never register as a Persian. So goodbye, have a nice day, and always go for a pedigreed cat. Do not, if you are paying for a cat, always ask for the documentation, vaccination sheet, and health certificate of that particular cat.